to learn digital painting you need to master the fundamentals of art. But who wants to do boring exercises really? Famous businessman and YouTube phenomenon Alex Hormozzi said this. Advanced is not doing the fancy stuff, it's doing more of the basics and doing them at scale. And when I heard this, I immediately thought about art. Because why shouldn't this apply to drawing and painting as well? And you might think like all those famous artists you admire, in my case people like Alex Ross for example, are way beyond this and don't concern themselves with the basics anymore. And this is probably true. But I think they only are so good because they have already mastered the basics and have ingrained them into the workflow long ago. But let's be honest here, most of us are not at that level yet and we need to concern ourselves with the basics more. The big problem here is that painting simple stuff can be boring. All those exercises people tell you to do, like painting simple balls, cubes or cylinders, well, that gets boring pretty fast. Heck, even I told you to draw simple forms in my last video about drawing basics, which I still recommend you check out. And you can learn the basics very effectively with that. But in the end, that's not what you want to be drawing all day, right? Now, what if I told you there was a solution to this that can actually help you learn drawing and painting much faster while enjoying the process? This might sound kind of crazy, but I think this is really the solution that makes practicing way more fun and gets results faster. It's something I've been doing in the last weeks as well, and it's not magical at all. Enter painting simple characters. Yes, it's nothing revolutionary, like I said, but hear me out. Because once you understand how powerful this is, you can really unlock new progress. As I said, painting simple forms only can get boring quickly. The thing is, from what I've seen, there's often a gap between painting simple stuff and painting really complex realistic stuff. What I often see is people recommending to do these basic exercises to learn the basics of perspective, values and color. And once the fundamentals are explained, the next step is to learn anatomy and to construct almost realistic figures using these basic forms. But this introduces so many problems at once. You need to learn human anatomy and proportions, how to paint details, how to paint skin tones, how to paint textures and materials. It basically introduces everything at once. And that's why painting simple characters is so powerful. You don't introduce 80 problems at once. You just take it one step further. With a simple character made up of basic forms, you practice the fundamentals while creating something cool. It's much easier to shade and color a nose that's made up of a simple ball, for example, than a completely realistic one. This way you don't get distracted by trying to create the perfect nose shape and avoid getting overwhelmed by all these little form and plane changes. You actually just shade a ball and think about the values and color. How bright is the light source? What color is the light? How hard or soft are the shadows and what color are they? And if you're still overwhelmed by this, you can always just peel back a layer and for example eliminate color from the process completely and just paint in black and white. This way you can completely concentrate on light and shadow. So overall the advantage here is that there are less distractions. This allows you to focus on the fundamentals and also your specific weaknesses. If you have trouble with lighting, paint in black and white and just concentrate on getting the shadows right. If you have trouble with colors, focus on choosing colors and try different color combinations until it starts to look good. And if you have trouble with blending for example, focus on that and try to get smooth transitions between colors. There are more benefits though. Think about it. How long do you think it takes to draw a simple character like that? A study like this takes me 20 to 30 minutes. And you could be even faster if you kept it simple and just stopped as soon as you notice that you're just filling around with the last few details. At this speed you could create two or three little paintings like this in an hour. And it's just faster than creating one big painting in like 5 hours or something. And in the end, more studies lead to more progress. But apart from the endless quest to get better and improve your art, there's another benefit to this. If everything you did was painting basic cubes and stuff like that, what do you have to show for it? A sketchbook full of simple forms is not that interesting, is it? So while painting simple characters, you actually end up painting something cool. Because who wants to spend that time just painting simple forms? At the beginning of the year, I did an experiment and painted just still lifes for 30 days. From a painting perspective, fruits are basically just balls most of the time. And while this definitely was a cool experience and I learned a lot, 
I didn't really end up painting stuff I want to paint. If you ask me, I actually want to create and paint somewhat realistic superheroes and villains. And while Super Mario isn't quite the style of character I'd like to create, it's still more interesting to me than fruits on tables. And let's be real here, Mario basically is a superhero, right? He is made up of the primary colors red, blue and yellow. He has a big ladder on his head. He has actual superpowers, as long as he eats his mushrooms of course. And he has super in his name, come on! So if you don't want to paint only simple characters forever, how do you take this concept to the next level? The first step is to paint your own scenes without reference images. As you can probably imagine, I've used reference images for these Mario themed paintings. This way you can effectively test your knowledge of color and light. It's one thing to paint from a reference image. You can learn a lot from that and I highly recommend it. But you always have your reference image to fall back on. It acts as a guide for you at all times. But when painting your own scenes you don't have that obviously. This is a great test of your knowledge and skill level. The second step is to gradually introduce more complex forms into the mix. Instead of going straight to hyper-realistic paintings, take it step by step. Start painting characters that are made up of a little bit more complex forms. Introduce a little bit more realistic proportions. Paint in a kind of semi-realistic style. This way you can, in theory, improve the difficulty in a gradual way without overwhelming yourself too quickly. Now, altogether I don't want you to think that basic exercises like drawing or painting simple forms are bad. Not at all! It's just that I think that we can all make practicing much more fun if we actually go ahead and use these simple forms to create some simple characters as soon as we can. And while this is a good idea in general, there's still a lot that can go wrong when practicing. To learn how to practice more efficiently, I recommend you to watch these two videos on screen right now. Thanks for watching.